Cyril spelled C Y R I L Cyril last name is I B E and that's pronounced eBay our cousins on that big website <laughs> but our names are spelled differently Interesting Yes eBay yeah with an i <laughs> with an i yes yeah Great yeah. And your name Natasha Davis Bowen Okay so I'll go to D that uh, that will make me find it easier Got a nice fancy recorder too that's one yeah. of those that's a professional recorders <laughs> Yes 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 in radio land uh, these days and, have to be ready. Uh, and I have this too, so we can right. be recording in both places. Okay, sounds good. Good afternoon, I'm Cyril Ebay and this is Miami Valley Journal. Today we have from Atlanta, Georgia, Natasha with Natasha uh, Davis Bowen. Bowen. Mm -hmm. And tell us about visionary people. Well, well, Visionary People started in 2007. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Good afternoon. This is Cyril Ebay with Miami Valley Journal, and our guest this afternoon at the Dayton Book Expo 2012 is Natasha Williams uh, Bowen. Natasha Davis Bowen. Natasha Davis, Davis Bowen yes. of Visionary People from Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. Tell us about Visionary People. Well, Visionary People get, came to life in 2007. And the purpose behind Visionary People was to uh, enhance the lives of others. It's really designed to allow people to transform their vision for success into reality. And that's our mission. Our mission is to give people the opportunity to see how they can make things happen. So when we launched in 2007, as some businesses, they really weren't sure where they should put their footing. And then as we kept growing and really finding our niche, in 2009, we really exploded, uh, positioning ourselves in the industry of business and marketing strategy. I am a business and marketing strategist, and through that, we help small businesses and mid-sized companies and organizations to really just look at the processes they have, employ some business development techniques and strategies, and also marketing-wise to understand and to utilize online and offline marketing to their advantage. How can they best do these uh, things these days, online and offline? Well, you know, online is one of the things. If you're not online, you're missing out about 70% of your audience. Some people, you know, you got to drag them into the new age and say, listen, there's tools and resources out there. Use them. They're available to you. Uh, when you're I online, I, you know what I mean? On As example... When you think about social media, let's look at social media. Social media has become one of the hugest platforms for businesses to broadcast what they're doing and also to attract customers. But they're going on social media and they're not employing strategy. You know, I sit down and I put together strategic campaigns. What are we saying? How are we saying it? Who are we targeting? Going into those databases and those analytics and looking at the audience that you're attracting, tweaking the message so that it speaks to the audience and you can now draw them into your company. So instead of going on Facebook just saying, hi, how are you, you know, making chicken today or whatever, small businesses really need to curtail and hone in onto what they're saying and how they're saying it because that is your customer that is out there on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Nig, um, Ning, Dig, Tout, all of it. That's your audience and those are your potential customers. So you have to communicate with them and, and give them that call to action to convert them to become your loyal customers. So in that sense, what do you advise a regular mom and pop shop to be communicating via social media? What do you tell them? That's a great question. One of the things I tell my small businesses when I'm working with them, you know, the mom and pop business, first of all, mom and pop businesses don't have large marketing budgets. We have to use conservative budgets, and but the goal is to get sizable results. So I sit down and I always say, let's sit down and do the research. Let's really look at your target market and don't just say, I want women and men age 18 to 25 and I want them living in metro whatever. Let's get a little bit more specific. Let's look at their demographics. Let's look at what they like to do. Are they single homes, dual homes, single income, looking at their per capita? And then you get on 
social media and now you target the message to them so if you're a mom and pop business you want to be more specific get a customer relationship management tool an email marketing tool such as constant contact I'm one of a the solution one. partners mm -hmm. of, of constant contact as well as one of the certified specialists is that and what right? I yes it is I'm very proud of it I've used it uh, it's very effective. you know constant contact has done what others are trying to do and I am proud to be one of their partners because it's really changing the way and facilitating the way small businesses operate. One of the first things I tell any small business, medium or small, what kind of email marketing system are you using? How are you communicating and engaging with your potential and existing customers? You know, it's one of the things when you finally get that customer. It's horrible when you lose them because mm -hmm. you didn't communicate with them. Mm -hmm. You know, you work so hard to grab them. It's another thing to lose them. And that's some of the things we teach in our business boot camp class as well. So you're saying that uh, even s small things as e-newsletters mm -hmm. are crucial these days for businesses to thrive. Absolutely. When you go on to get your, your email marketing system, I highly recommend Constant Contact because it is easy to use. It is flexible. It's innovative. Okay, and it's accomplishing the goal. When you set out to do your email marketing, one of the things you should now be incorporating in everything you do is understanding that video speaks volumes. You know, you don't have to be a big production company. People just want to see you at a surface level because most people are tired of all the big talk and all the big fluff. They want to see you at your cleanest, clearest position. So what do you do? Take out a camera. Hey, we're opening up shop today. We're having a great time. You know, we made this, we made that. We'd love to have you come over. Be authentic, be personable, be reachable and approachable. Put that in your email campaign. Blast it out to social media. Blast it out to your current audience as well. You're listening to Miami Valley Journal. I'm Cyril Ibe speaking here at the Dayton Book Expo with a visionary people um, Natasha, Natasha Davis, -Bowen. Davis Bowen she is gonna tell us I saw you earlier Natasha um, doing some TV broadcasting yeah. so to speak online taping mm -hmm. for for what yes we do VPTV it's visionary people TV VPTV is one of the platforms that we utilize in order to give businesses an audience a soundboard and a platform and what we do is that we stream it live on internet uh, we've been blessed to get well over 300 hours of viewing on our internet channel and that's not even when we're doing anything live that's, that's just regular on-demand viewing that we're attracting that. So when you go to livestream.com forward slash visionary people, you're able to take account and see our on-demand shows, everything we've done. The Dayton Book Expo is up already. People are watching it right now on demand as well as live. And what we do through that is because... Um, Internet has given small businesses an opportunity to expand beyond their borders. Mm -hmm. Now I can show another business to another country that would have been a lot more expensive or impossible to do had they not had these types of platforms. Uh, we've been able to make connections in Trinidad with um, phenomenal people out there. The Philippines, we're doing a lot of collaboration there. I'm also the director of membership at the World Chamber of Commerce and one of the things we really, really um, and facilitate is international commerce, international communication because it is, that is really a valuable piece of any business. You have to know how to communicate to people at different times, different places. Mm -hmm. You got to know how to do it. <coughs> Excuse me. So for example, with the Dayton Book Expo, mm -hmm. you streaming live, what are you communicating to your audience? What we're communicating to the audience, one, the first thing we're doing is talking about Dayton Book Expo, that this is a powerful, powerful event that people should be involved in. The next thing we're doing is we're doing one-on-one -on -one interviews with the authors. They're coming up with their book, they're talking about their story, they're giving out their website information, their social media connections. We're then tagging them as we're going along with the interview. So our database, which is a little over 10,000, has now been exposed to a new bunch of people. You know, one person means it's a thousand people behind, and I always say that I'm not by myself. I have a pool of people, not to mention all my strategic partners that follow behind me. So when I post something, they're at mentioning me, and they're reposting it. Mm -hmm. So now we're talking about half a million people are seeing this thing. So tell me, what is it in it for Visionary People TV then? 
What's the need for it? What's it in it? What's, What's in it? Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, Visionary People TV has several different things. We have, again, we do events such as this. If you're having an event, you want live uh, streaming an opportunity, we do come and we'll allow the op you to talk about your company, your organization, your event, and anyone that's a participant, the sponsors, the attendees, we touch base on them too. We also facilitate the education realm. We strongly believe in education. So we also do a show called A Day in the Life of Business every month, uh, which I host. And what we do is we bring in very a very amount of business owners that have tried and proven. Mm -hmm. And we bring them to give real life scenario. Here's what I did. Here's what I did. Here's what I did. That's how I achieved this goal. So a lot of people are watching A Day in the Life of Business. We have our live audience in Atlanta, Georgia, where they come and they come in the audience. I mean, these guys are taking serious notes because they're learning. And uh, we're delivering that information. And also we have our virtual audience that's watching the show. They're learning and they get to communicate with us while we're live on the show because we have our chat room. So they'll put a question in the chat room uh, that they want to answer. So you, we have our virtual and our live audience. Some businesses have questions. Our last question on our show, we had women are forced to reckon with. These women went from zero to over a million dollars in business. And we had uh, audiences live and virtual. One of them owns all of the H&R blocks in Rockdale County in Georgia. They was like, how did you do that? What, how, how do you handle a franchise? You know, so we get real questions and we get real answers. But what does... Uh, Visionary People TV gain from this? Visionary People TV gains from it because we are a business, mm -hmm. all the same. So it's the same principles that any other business. So I pay to be on Visionary People TV. Exactly. Okay. And we do it very nominal because we understand, again, conservative budgets get sizable results. Mm -hmm. uh, that is our thing. Productive in investments, progressive in actions, and successful development. So we don't overcharge. We have to charge because we are a business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we are a business. So we charge a very nominal fee, but we give you so much in it. Not only do you get to broadcast your, sh your information, your message out to a lot of people, millions of people, but also in that, in that realm, you're also retaining the link so that you can use it as a company in your own broadcasting in your own promotions and then from there we're also blasting out in our social media as well finally you know that minority businesses are always looking to be educated on how to use current technology how to use business strategies right. and, and you know we don't hear enough of those mm -hmm. what do you tell people and when you come to a place like this, uh, about what you take advantage of these days? You know, um, like I said, you know, sometimes it's, you know, I sound like a broken record because I'm sure they've heard it before. You have to get educated. You have to go, if there's seminars, workshops, boot camps, anything, go out and make it happen. You know, I, gone are the days where I don't have any money for that. I'm not, why should I pay $100 to get that information? Why should I pay $59? Why should I pay $200? Well, why not? Because if you knew how to do it, you'd be doing it. Mm -hmm. And now you have people that have intellectual property that you can't even really put a value on, but it's a business and you have to eat. I have to eat. Everybody has to eat and live. So when you are a business owner, you have to go out and get the education because there's best practices. There's new trends always happening. As a business and marketing strategist myself, what do I focus on? I focus every day on business development best practices, marketing best practices online and offline. So I live and breathe this stuff. Now if you have a mom and pop business that's maybe a restaurant, they live and breathe the food industry. So therefore, if you want to learn how to market your business for the most efficient way, you have to go and learn from someone who lives and breeds that industry. So that's what I encourage people, uh, business owners to do, small, medium, solopreneurs. Go out, find where the education is, learn about it. You can't say, I can't afford it. Now, don't get me wrong. I know some, some things are very terribly priced. You know, you have some people that are charging $2,500 and $2,400 a head. That I can understand someone's, God, that's a lot of money. I don't know because I need to know I can make it back. But when you have a workshop, a seminar, a conference happening, and you're paying $200, that is not a lot of money. Because first of all, life is the most expensive school you can ever go to, right? And secondly, if you went to a college, you're paying anywhere from four to $500 per credit, and each class is about three or four credits. Go figure. <laughs> Natasha Williams. Uh, 
he wants to call me Wiz. I'm going to go get married to somebody by way. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's a lot of people. We've met a lot of people here, yes. so names are tossed. It's Natasha Davis Bowen. Uh, they also call me the chief visionary uh, because I, I, I'm really passionate about transforming that vision for success into reality. And you can always find me on Visionary People Arise with an S dot com. Visionary People Arise dot com. Thank you so much for joining us on Miami Valley Journal at the Dayton Book Expo 2012. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And that's it for me, Cyril Ebay, host of Miami Valley Journal on WCSU at Central State University, where I am Assistant Professor of Journalism and Mass Communications, saying goodbye to the Visionary People <laughs> TV audience. See you again. See Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you a bunch. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank awesome. You.